Now we will look at the mechanism of action potentials on how neurons transmit an impulse along the axon. So we begin again with resting neuron when neuron is not transmitting any signals and the RMP value around minus 70 millivolt represent by this red line here, the resting potential. So this is a graph of membrane potential in millivolt versus time in millisecond. So at resting stage, all voltage gated sodium and potassium channels are closed. Only the leak channel open to maintain resting membrane potential. Now, neuron receive stimulus. So this stimulus received by the dendrite then move towards the soma and trigger local current that depolarize the axon membrane. So this will cause opening of sodium voltage gated channel. So why these channels open as the name voltage gated channel? So it will open when there is a changes on membrane potential and due to the um, stimulus. Okay, so when this open sodium that is high on the outside then start to enter into the cells. Carrying the positive charge then depolarize the membrane. Okay, so as you can see here the membrane potential now move away from the RMP and move to a less negative membrane potential. Okay, so as more and more sodium enter into the cells the membranes now reach to the threshold level. Okay, so what happened next? Okay, as the membrane potential reach to the threshold level that is approximately around minus 55 millivolt, eventually all of these sodium voltage gated channels open and cause sodium to rush into the cell. And this will produce sharp upward spite of the action potential. As you can see on this uh, blue line here, there is a spite of the action potential. Okay, And this is what we call as a depolarization due to the sodium voltage gated channel open. Okay, sodium channel open and cause sodium to move into the cells. So this membrane potential then hit to the point of positive 30 millivolt. So as membrane potential reach to this point, positive 30, sodium voltage gated channel then inactivate. So sodium channel inactivate where the channels now close and no further influx of a sodium, no more sodium can enter into the cells. So these changes then trigger the opening of potassium voltage gated channel. So now causing um, the potassium ion that is high inside the cells to rush out of the cells. So carrying these positive charges the membrane that is initially reached to positive 30 millivolt now lose these positive ions due to the efflux of potassium. It will then cause um, repolarization of a membrane. Okay. As the membrane potential return to the polarized state of a resting neuron and restore the internal negativity of a neuron. Okay. Repolarization means it return again to the polarized state of a neuron. So as you can see, there is a decrease in the membrane potential eh, to restore again the negativity. So this is due to potassium channel open. I just write the potassium open means indicate the potassium channel open and cause potassium to move out of the cells. Okay, so it further decreases until it reaches to this um, resting membrane potential again. So as the membrane returns to RMP, okay, so now these potassium voltage gated channels are closed 
However, some of the potassium channel remain open. And this late closing, yeah? late closing of potassium voltage gated channel causes excess potassium to move out of the cells before the channel close. Yeah? So some of the potassium might pass to uh, the outside that further um, repolarize the membrane, which means the membrane now move um, towards more negative membrane potentials. Yeah? So this can heat up to um, negative 90 millivolt. Okay? So this is what we call as hyperpolarization. Yeah? So it's already written to the polarized state of a resting neuron, but then it hyper, it goes beyond the resting membrane potential. So we also call this um, stage as refractory period. Okay, refractory period is where neuron is unresponsive to further stimulation. Okay. So now all the sodium and potassium channels are closed and membranes next eh, return to the resting state. So this is by the actions of sodium potassium pump eh, to redistribute again the ion and restore the resting uh, membrane potentials eh, to again to negative 70 millivolt. Okay, so the most important point eh, I want to highlight here is the threshold level here. So the threshold which is around minus 55 millivolt here. This is the critical level to which membrane potential must depolarize to initiate action potential. If uh, the membrane potentials depolarize but does not hit to the threshold, it will not trigger action potential and the potential then return back to the resting potential. So no action potential uh, fired by the neuron. So that's why we call the action potential as all or nothing or all or none law because it will only trigger as it reaches to the threshold. If not, then um, the membrane return again. So nothing and no action potential would be triggered. Conductions of action potential is self-propagating which means one trigger in the axon helot, they can just generate it by itself and continue along the axon at a constant velocity. So this diagram shows three successive time action potential pass from left to the right. So the first region here, okay, so this is at the site where action potential generated. So let's say this is on the axon helot. Flow of sodium into the neuron's membrane create action potential in this region. Okay, so this is these regions undergo process of a depolarization. And uh, this sodium inside the cell was spread laterally back and forth and depolarized the neighboring regions here and caused the next neighboring region to undergo the action potential which indicate by this second diagram here the neighboring regions are now undergo action potentials okay and as this action potential gener generate here the potassium ion will diffuse out of the neuron at the first region so the first region here will undergo a repolarization okay uh, that cause potassium to move out of the cell so immediately after repolarization hy hyperpolarization making this previous region in a refractory period. So remember refractory period is where the region here is unresponsive to any stimulus. Okay. And the uh, action potentials are propagated in one direction along the axon due to action potentials cannot be regenerated in the regions where the sodium channels are inactivated. So during the refractory period here, this is where uh, the sodium channels are in 
activate okay so inactivate here means it cannot regenerate uh, the action potentials and thus ensure that action potentials only um, propagate in one direction so it will just stimulate the next and the next regions of the axon and this ensure that action potentials only propagated away from its point of origin eh, and prevent the action potential to move backward so because action potentials is all or none even the magnitude and durations of action potentials are the same along this axon two factors that can affect the rate of impulse propagation number one is axon diameter so larger diameter offer less resistance to current flow thus increase the speed so here the axon with a large diameter and this is the one with a smaller diameter so large diameter here offer less resistance compared to the smaller have more resistance okay so remember axon is still part of the cell so they have also the cytoplasmic protein they have uh, the vesicle inside the cells okay so now when larger diameter of the axon here will give more space for the ions to move thus increase the speed of the impulse propagations compared to the smaller less speed and the second is a degree of myelination action potentials in myelinated axon the axon with the myelin sheath here are only produced at the nodes of Ramvia, which is here okay compared to those uh, that is unmyelinated without the myelin sheath means um, the productions of action potentials have to go through along this membrane okay so with the myelin sheath where uh, the gated channel are only concentrated at the, at the nodes of Renvia and produce action potentials only at this region okay, that will cause the potential the action potential to leap or to jump from node one node of Renvia to the next so this is what we call as a saltatory conduction